The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Tax collectors and sinners were all drawing near to listen to Jesus, but the Pharisees and scribes began to complain, saying, This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. So to them he addressed this parable. What man among you, having a hundred sheep and losing one of them, would not leave the ninety-nine in the desert and go after the lost one until he finds it? And when he does find it, he sets it on his shoulders, and with great joy, and upon his arrival home, he calls together his friends and neighbors and says to them, Rejoice with me, because I have found my lost sheep. I tell you, in just the same way, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous people who have no need of repentance. Or what woman, having ten coins and losing one, would not light a lamp and sweep the house, searching carefully until she finds it? And when she does find it, she calls together her friends and neighbors and says to them, Rejoice with me, because I have found the coin that I have lost. In just the same way, I tell you, there will be rejoicing among the angels of God over one sinner who repents. The Gospel of the Lord. In today's Gospel, one of the lessons is that if something is lost, we should go look for it. And specifically, the lesson is, if we are lost sinners, God always comes and looks for us. Even if there's 99 that are doing good, the one he goes to find. Even if there's ten coins that are usually there, the ones that's lost, he's looking for. And there are times in our lives when we're lost. We're humans. This is our reality. We're lost. And God comes looking for us. He wants this relationship with us, this deep and intimate relationship with us, so that we know who he is. In the first reading, when Moses is pleading for God not to bring his wrath on those who are sinning, it's our first indication is that when you and I pray, when you and I talk to God, when you and I, through our relationship, have this moment with God where we are fervent, where we are sure, where we are pleading for the right thing to be done, God hears us and responds. And he did so. And it was beautiful. And it set in motion this understanding that God's mercy is more than we can understand. God's mercy comes even when we don't deserve it. God's mercy came to those in the Old Testament and it continues to come. And St. Paul to his letter to Timothy says, I am grateful to him who has strengthened me, Christ Jesus our Lord, because he considered me trustworthy. And it says, I was once a blasphemer and a persecutor and arrogant, but I have been merciful treat, mercifully treated because I acted out of in, ignorance. And indeed, the grace of our Lord is abundant. Paul was lost, and God went to find him. And God 
changed his life. God let his mercy flow freely to Paul. And Paul received it. And then with the gifts and talents he had been given, he went out to proclaim the good news to the Gentiles. And for you and I, 2,000 years later, he's the most prolific writer in the New Testament with all the letters that he wrote to the different churches. God took a man who was lost. He looked for him. He found him. He poured his mercy and grace into him. And then out of his gratitude, Paul then gave that mercy and grace to others. And we still benefit 2,000 years later. Brothers and sisters, this is what stewardship is all about. We're in the moment where we're doing our stewardship renewal here at the parish. And I asked you last week, you're going to receive some materials to pray. I asked you to continue to pray. If you've got your materials, this is the week to fill it out and bring it next week. But it's all about understanding through this relationship with God, through this conversation with God, through this understanding of His intimate love for us, what He is calling us to do, how He is calling us to respond. And now's a time to prayerfully consider that, to think about that, to allow God's nudging, God's prompting, the Holy Spirit in your life to awaken in you the ministry so that we can also say, I am thankful for Him who strengthened me because He considered me trustworthy. Today I want to ask Carrie and Justina to come up. They're a couple of our parishioners. And I want to t them to tell you and witness to you about their journey in stewardship. So thank you all for coming up. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, we are Carrie and Justina Kreger. We are parishioners here at St. John's. And we've been asked to talk to you this morning about what stewardship has meant in our lives. Take over. Stewardship is the giving of some of your time, talent, and treasure back to God in appreciation of what God has given to you. Renewal Weekend allows us to be purposeful about our spiritual growth in the coming year. I think about this kind of like exercising. We all know that our health is very important to us, and I like the idea of exercising. But in any given moment, it's easy for me not to go exercise and do something else. When I look at my life, when I've been most successful in working out in my health is when I make a plan, I commit to it, and then I follow through. My health is very important and I should do this and so is your spiritual health. First, let's talk about time. Time is spending time with God in prayer. I've not been Catholic very long, but I love the mass. The mass is a time for me, it's a quiet time, it's time for me to speak with God and work on my spirituality. However, when I come to church, I have to confess that I park strategically so that I know that I can go to my car and get out and not be blocked. Uh, as mass is winding down, I look for the exit that I'm going to take to get me out to my car as fast as possible because I have other things that I need to do. And it's okay to be busy and have other commitments, and it's okay not to, stay, to stick around after mass. However, it's not okay if you don't share your talents with the church. If you don't do that, you're really missing out on a lot of spiritual growth. With last year's stewardship renewal, I made a commitment to attend Mass each week in all Holy Days of Obligation, regardless of my schedule. This doesn't seem like a big deal. This is something that we should do anyway, just like exercising. However, renewal can also be renewing your commitment to something that you know you should do. And through this, this year, I have grown in my faith as a result. Something else that I did in this space around time is I wasn't very active in discussing my faith with my family or my friends that weren't Catholic. This year, I made a commitment to be more proactive and seek those conversations out. And in doing that, I've strengthened my relationships with those people and also my faith. Talent is about using your talents in the parish ministries. I said earlier that I really love Mass, 
and I do. However, this my I'm sorry, I just messed up. <laughs> um, so all of us have separate talents, right? Um, Justina, she's very personable. She's smart and organized. She's upbeat and welcoming, and people love to deal with her. So she spends her time with hospitality. She helps with the greeters. She helps plan th theology after hours. Those are things that are in line with her talents. Me, I like to work outside. So I like dirt. I like equipment. I help with the playgrounds and outside projects. I dig up tree stumps. I spray weeds for the church. I also help with pancake breakfast when I'm asked. Uh, we have children that attend St. John's School. They're also altar servers. We're very active in the Gopher Catholic Schools. We also participate in the envisioning team. All of that through this year, or all of that uh, that we've contributed to has really been very rewarding for us and has helped with our faith. I ask that whenever the commitment cards come, you please pray and consider where it is that you can contribute to the church with your talents. The last thing is treasure, and we all know what that is. I can say that this is something that was specifically difficult for me um, as I became a Catholic. They say that you can't take it with you, and we all know that that's true, but we can certainly hoard money and we can spend it foolishly or selfishly while we're alive. And I've done that quite a bit in my life, and I'm sure I'll do that uh, after this point as well. However, giving my time and spending my talent at the church has allowed us to open our hearts and see where it is that we can thoughtfully give. Um, this last year, Justina and I made uh, what for us is a large um, commitment for the next six years to donate to Catholic education. We wouldn't have done that had we not been involved and had that time where we were involved with the parish, giving our time and talent. Our commitments last year through the Commitment Week Wind have significantly strengthened our faith. Our lives are more purposeful, and we're more connected to the parish. Please pray and consider what you can do to grow in your stewardship in the coming year. So I hope everybody received in mail uh, our uh, ministry catalog and a commitment card. If not, they should be coming this week, or if you have not received anything from us, please check with the church office. That means maybe you're not registered and you're missing out on a lot of uh, communication from the church. Next weekend, we'll be collecting these cards. You can bring them to Mass. If you're not here, you can mail it back to us. You can also um, fill them online. There's a link to the catalog and the card itself. So thank you for everything you do for the parish and our community, and thank you for your time this morning. Some of you know that Justina was our office manager for a period of time, and uh, when she left, her volunteer's time has really gone up. And uh, Carrie has also helped with the Go for Catholic Schools uh, uh, fund drive that we had. And this year, we went from 38,000 last year donation to over 108,000 this year. And part of that was he was on the team that part of that. So take time this week, please, to think about this and think about what God is calling you to.